William Anderson, Best. The Power of Love. The Power of Love, William Anderson. The Power of Love is incredible. This was proven by a study done at Harvard, a very famous study, where they followed over 700 people for 75 years. You know what they discovered? They discovered that the most critical factor for happiness and fulfillment in life is Love, that's right. You know what? This study also proves that the Beatles were right. All you need is love. And that's great. But what about the neglected, the abandoned, the abused? What happens to them and what can be done for them? I'm going to share with you a few of my experiences from my life where I learned some lessons about these things. And what I encourage you to do is to listen with your heart. One of the most powerful experiences in my life was working with babies and toddlers in orphanages here in Romania. I saw firsthand what happens when little ones are not loved. Babies stop crying if no one responds to them. They just lay in their cribs and they roll side to side. And occasionally, they'll stick their hand in the air and stare at it just to get some stimulation. When they get a little older, they like to just sit and rock back and forth like this all day. And some of them, they've taken, they bang their heads against the cribs and the walls just to feel something. By the age of two, they have turned inward to their own little worlds, and they have lost the capacity to love and to be loved. If you were to go up to them and try to give them a hug, they would freak out. They would start screaming and crying and pushing you away. This is called attachment disorder. And as I learned about them, I come to realize that many people suffer from attachment disorder of some sort because of the lack of love in their lives, myself included. When I was young, about a hundred years ago. <laughs> I grew up with a father who did not love me. I never heard a kind word, only how bad and worthless I was. In high school, to give you an example, I tried out for the basketball team. It had been my dream since I was a little boy to play for the team. Well, I made a team and I was so excited. And I went home and my family sitting around the table eating dinner. And I go, I made the team. My dad stops, he stares at me, rolls his eyes. The coach must have felt sorry for you. Imagine a whole life of that. By the age of four, I had started to close and harden my heart and kept people at a distance because of the hurt in my life. And at age five, I started hanging out with other boys who were just like me. And we got into stealing, vandalism, and fighting. We were being hurt, so we wanted to hurt others. Doesn't that make sense? You know, it even impacted me. All those things impacted me even in my older age, when I was 20. Like, that's young for you, right? You know what? When people would surprise me with a hug, I would freak out. Whoa, what are you doing? You know, I was a little bit like those toddlers. What happens to the neglected the abandoned and the abused, they experience pain, heart pain, that goes deep into their souls and severely limits their capacity to love and to be loved. And many times it leads to darkness and destruction. What can be done for them? Love! Love is the only power in the entire universe that can heal the human heart. But not a sentimental love, a costly love, a love that is patient, persistent, and unconditional. 
Well, what did this love look like with toddlers with attachment disorder? Well, to get a toddler to the point where they'll actually allow you to hug them takes a long process of many baby steps. What I would do is I'd sit them on a couch pretty far away, and over time, I'd get closer and closer. And finally, I'd be next to them. And once they got comfortable with me there, I'd put them on my knees and bounce them up and down like a horsey, you know? And then eventually, over time, closer and closer to me until I could hug them. That's a great feeling when a child will let you hug you, finally. That process for them would take anywhere from three weeks to three months. But what about in my life? Did I ever experience the power of love? Oh, thankfully, yes, I did. When I was in high school, or even, for, even from grade school, from fifth grade to 12th grade, I had coaches in sports who spoke words of affirmation to me, words of encouragement, words of life. And they made a difference for me. And then when I was in my 20s, this young couple, they reached out to me to be a friend. You know what, the first few times they invited me to their house to have dinner with them, I made up excuses not to go because I wasn't used to that. It kind of freaked me out a little bit. But they were persistent. They kept asking me, and finally I gave in, and I went and had dinner. And that was the beginning of what became a very special relationship that brought much healing to my heart. Fellow Toastmasters and dear guests, we can change the world one heart at a time with the power of love. So I challenge you, I encourage you to find one person who's not easy to love and love them. Just one, just one. Love them patiently, love them persistently, love them unconditionally. If you do, not only will you help change them for the better, you will change yourself. And whatever happens, never ever forget all you need is love. Mr. Contest Chair. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks.